All right, so we had the left and then we did the right, and now we're going to do our third type, which is the midpoint rectangular approximation. And so basically here we're looking at um, values that are going to come out actually better than the left or right in the overall long run. And what we do is we use rectangles whose heights are calculated at the midpoint. So if we think about that, you know, we did the left, it would be here, the right would be here, and we're going right in the middle, and that's going to be, you know, how we determine it. So it's going to be, you know, at that point. 25 is where it's going to be at, and this is going to be 0 0.75, and 1 uh, 1.25, 1.75, okay? And so that midpoint's basically between A plus B over 2. So, you know, again, our A is 0, our 0 0.5 is our B, and divide that by 2, we get the 0 0.25, and then we go from 1 to 1, 0.5 to 1, and, and we do the same thing, and so we get that 0.75. And we're going to calculate those. Now, again, this is part of the example we did with uh, left and right with only four rectangles. And notice this one really doesn't help because that was the same as our left. And so we're still way overestimating. But the key is we're using very few rectangles. But if we increase the number of rectangles, then things start to look a little bit better, especially using our midpoint approximation. So when we do that, this one shows eight, this one shows 16. And remember, we were supposed to get to 3.1415. Uh, and well, 3.156, well, we're, hey, we're getting closer with eight. And then 3.14, hey, that's even closer with 16. And if we had gone to 32, you know, we're kind of cut each of those in half and get it smaller. And what happens is we're going to make each of the pieces that are going out or the pieces that have these blank white spots they're making them smaller every time we get a smaller uh, cut so the more rectangles we have the smaller the cut and the less um, amount of error we have left or right depending on where we're at on the curve so here the area of the region between the graph of f and the x-axis from a to b is given by the limit of sums as n increases without bounds so again if we went from you know 1 to 32 or 1 to 64 we're going to start getting smaller and smaller and we're going to get closer and closer to the actual value for that square root of the uh, 4 minus x squared okay so the more rectangles you use, uh, the better your approximation to the curve is going to be. And so area beneath the curve. So let f be a continuous non-negative function from a to b. And the area of the region r between the graph of f and the x-axis from a to b is given by the limit of. And again, we're going from 1 to n. So the higher the number of n's we use, the closer to actually the area of the region we get. So if n goes to infinity, we're going to actually get that area of the region pretty exact. Okay. And again, we're just taking all of those pieces, the f of xi's times however much our width is. And when you get to n, of infinity, you're going to have a very, 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 very small number here. And so it's going to actually help us get a good value for our sum. And so the xi, again, is the midpoint of the ith subinterval of length, again, b minus a divided by uh, n. So wherever we have a's and b's between them, OK? All right, so that leads us into our next piece, which is called the definite integral, OK? All right, so accumulated change in the different integral. How does that work? Well, the accumulated change of a function of f is described as what we just looked at here. You know, the sum of i from 1 to n, the limit as n goes to infinity, of f of x times that delta x. That's from a to b, from x a to b. Okay, and we can write this in shorthand. We can use this formation here. And this integral sign is going to be what really helps us because we can actually plug this into our calculator and we can get this. We also are going to be able to learn how to do it by a longhand, but a lot of this uh, book, we're, we're going to learn how to use our calculator to do these things. So what we're doing is we're taking the integral from a to b, you know, from x from a to b of f of x times dx. Okay. And our dx kind of represents that delta x there sign. And again, this is the integral sign. Uh, the values a and b identify the input interval. f is a function. And the symbol dx reminds us of the width uh, delta x of each subinterval. Now, when a and b are specific numbers, it's called a definite integral. So if we actually have from 2 to 4 or 1 to 7 or something like that, it's a definite integral. All right, so we're going to say let f be a continuous function defined on some interval from a to b, and the accumulated change, okay, you know, we've talked about accumulated change, or it's also called the definite integral from f of f from a to b is integral of a to b f of x 
dx equals the limit of n going from uh, up to infinity from i is 1 to n of f of xi sub del times delta x. And again, xi is those midpoints. Uh, we're looking at the midpoints, so whatever that is, of the i interval of length b minus a over n. Okay, so this is going to help us get those values uh, without actually having to go through, you know, a, a table with an infinite number of things. So we don't want to do that because, uh, you know, if we're looking back here, you know, these tables, if we have, you know, 10, eh, it's not too bad. If we have 20, it's getting worse. If we have 160, well, that's near impossible. So we, we don't want to do that, you know, and then if we get up to n being infinity, well, that's that's just too much. Okay, so that's going to help us actually solve some of these problems, getting the definite integral. Now, note, even though the left, right, and midpoint uh, rectangle approximations differ, when we have a finite number of rectangles used, such as that, you know, 4, 16, 8, you know, whatever, when the number of rectangles approaches infinity, the limits of all the approximations are going to be equal. So they're all going to be good once we get up to infinity for the number of rectangles. But again, you know, when we're doing this by hand, uh, the left versus the right versus the midpoint, the midpoint's going to be the best because that's going to be the one that we can actually, you know, get a closest value for with the smallest number of rectangles, whereas the left and right are going to go overestimate and underestimate compared to that midpoint. All right, so let's stop there and we'll come back for more.